Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Laura and today we are making three different kinds of breads. Two with sourdough, one with conventional yeast. Now this is going to be a slightly different video to what I had anticipated because when I recorded all of everything I was doing over the course of two days, a Friday and a Sunday, my microphone was not working the entire time. So what I've done is I've taken all of the awesome footage showing what I'm doing with my hands, what it all looks like, and all of the details of what the ingredients are, etc. I've put that together and told you guys what I'm doing at the time. So I hope that you still enjoy today's video and please look forward to next week's one when my microphone will definitely be working. So let's get started. In the brown bowl, I have the sourdough loaf mix that I mixed up last night to auto lie. I'll actually be leaving this here for a bit longer. Since this morning, after I'd fed my sourdough, it was only kind of medium level happy. I've made up this sourdough English muffin dough. So this is all ready to go. Sorry, I forgot to show you guys that, but this is gonna sit here for another eight hours till it's ready, along with this dough still auto -lizing. And here is my status. This is its second feed. It should be a lot happier in about eight hours. Now that my English muffin dough has had a chance to rise, I've just used my fingers to spread it out on the bench and then given it a little bit of a roll with the rolling pin. It's about a quarter to a half an inch thick. And then I'm just taking a glass or you can use like a cookie cutter or kind of anything you want. You know, this is a great step to get kids involved if you have them, just to cut out the dough. So you cut it out take it and then we're going to put it on the tray with that semolina flour. This part is nice and easy and then we're just going to let these sit here for about an hour so they can continue to rise. If you do have any scrappy bits left like I do here, just kind of mush those together to make the rest of the muffins. This recipe usually makes 12 or 13. While the English muffins are rising, I'm gonna go ahead and get the sourdough loaves going. So I try to weigh everything. You, you can get like conversions of cup measurements, but particularly when you're working with very, you know, wet ingredients like this, um, and with the precision that is required, at least for the measurements on sourdough, you definitely wanna use scales. So I'm adding in the starter to the flour and water that's been sitting here auto -lizing. And then after the starter, we just need some salt. Now I just use the scrapings method which is why there's such little left in the jar there. So I will scrape that down the sides and then put that small amount in the fridge and that will be what I use next time. Okay, I always forget to put my apron on and then end up with stuff on me. So we remembered this time, so that is a good job. Now with this dough, firstly, take off your rings. You really don't wanna get doughy rings. It is just no fun. And then for this first mix, I usually just start from the outside and sort of stretch up and like push it into the middle, kind of folding it in on itself. I know they always say fold and it's like, what's a fold? So here I'm gonna take the time to actually show you guys how I do my different folds. So this is my first mix when it's just flour, water, salt, starter, and we're trying to get it all mixed in together. I am gonna speed this up a little bit, but you will get the general idea. And this normally takes a couple of minutes. As you can see, this isn't like a 
perfect homogenous dough or anything, but it is well mixed. The starter is mixed in with the flour and water and salt. And so this is what we're gonna leave to rise for ideally an hour or two before you do the next fold. I forgot, so we ended up leaving this for about three hours. While I was letting that rest, I got going on cooking the English muffins. So this is just my one fry pan that is heated up nice and warm and you just literally put these in and then chuck a lid over them to try and hold in the steam. This just allows them to rise up a bit taller, a little bit easier. And then after a few minutes, just go in with your spatula or anything you have, probably wouldn't recommend fingers, but, <laughs> and flip those over. And basically just as much as they are browned to your liking, that, that means that they're done. Alrighty, these are all cooked. I'm just going to let them rest and cool for an hour or so and then put them away. Okay, so firstly, we're gonna start with a nice, clean, dry bench and we're going to take off our rings again very important step and then i'm going to add some water to the bench and this is how we're going to lubricate the dough <laughs> for these first folds and normally i would do that a few more times like this with the water on the bench So here I show you what it looks like when we're stretching and folding. You can see that already that dough is like holding together so much better. So again, normally I'd probably do like eight or so folds, but because I forgot about this for a few hours, I'm kind of having to catch up a bit. So I will keep folding this and keep stretching it out and getting it into a nice tight dough ball as this will be my only wet folds that I'm doing. Now that that's all nice and together, looking awesome and homogenous and well mixed, we're going to put that back into the bowl and let that sit for another hour or so. Alrighty, so now that we're gonna be dividing the dough because this is not one gigantic loaf, this is actually two <laughs> loaves. Uh, lightly flour the bench, tip the dough out, and then get it to a shape where you can sort of guesstimate how to cut it in half. I'm using my handy dandy dough scraper here. Then do a few folds to get this into a nice tight dough ball because I'm having to catch up on folds here. It's a few more folds than you would normally expect, probably about double the number of folds to be honest, but just do your best to get that folded up nicely. All right, dust them with flour so the tea towel doesn't stick. Give them a good smack. <laughs> uh, I really wish you could hear me playing the drums on that dough. Now, I don't have proper like Benetton baskets for my dough. I have these big soup bowls. I put tea towels in them. I sprinkle them with flour and that's what I put into the fridge for my cold fermentation of my dough. Again, just taking these, folding it up nice and tight, 
and then plonking it on in there. Alrighty, it is Sunday, the oven is preheating ready for the sourdough and I'm going to get started on the soy barley linseed loaf. So first step on this is to get the barley cooking. I'm doing about half a cup of barley and I'll start with probably a cup of water. I'll let this cook away for about 20 minutes before I add in the oats and linseed. Now that the oven is up to temperature, I'm gonna grab out this little paddle type thing that I made out of baking paper for last week's sourdough. I reuse these as long as I can. So this dough has been in the fridge for about 36 hours. So it is nice, ready to go. And first I just sprinkle this with flour. This basically just means that when I cut it, you can actually see the design. I don't know why I have to like pat the dough every time, but there you go. I also got this proper bread cutting knife. You can just do it with a regular knife, but it's a little bit more tricky and this really wasn't that expensive. So it came with a few different razor blades so you can swap them out once they get older. So I think this is gonna last me for quite a while. Um, main thing with the cuts is that you just want to kind of cover a decent area and get some nice long ones in there so that it can really open up on those. I tend to kind of change it every time just based on how I feel, but I definitely want to do one down the center because that's where it does the most rising and then probably a few around the edges. Okay, so we have kind of like a little spider webby type situation going on here. So this is the very important operation. <laughs> First thing is the oven proof stuff. So we grab out that Dutch oven that's been heating there, quickly take the lid off, put those mitts down. This is where those little handles come in handy. Lower that bread in, all done. And then put the lid back on and in the oven, good to go. Now that the barley's had a chance to mostly cook, I then added in two ounces-ish each of oats and linseed and a bit of extra water. While that's just finishing cooking, I'm adding one and a half teaspoons of commercial yeast. The first one ran out, so I had to grab my, my backup. <laughs> I'm then adding in my slightly sludgy mixture of linseed, oats, and barley. I promise it, it does taste better than it looks. And just mixing that in with the rest of the wet ingredients. The first sourdough is done and looking so good. Since I have another one to cook, I'm gonna put this bad boy straight back into the oven and get that heating back up to temperature and get my first sourdough onto my cooling rack. I'm doing two ounces or 60 grams of rye flour. 
another two ounces or 60 grams of wholemeal flour and then the rest will just be regular strong white bread flour. I would say it's 10 ounces, but I added 10 ounces here and then I kept adding as I was kneading. So I'd probably say about 13 ounces. So it's, oh gosh, maths. 390, 400 grams. <laughs> and a bit of salt, because if you've ever had bread with no salt, um, you'll know it's a, it's a bad idea. When I first started mixing by hand, it was very sticky and very like crumbly, as you can see here. Yeah, I ended up with monster hands. <laughs> and this is when I realized that there was a bit too much moisture having come from the barley, oats, and linseed, so I needed to add more flour. And it's also good that I was using my hands by this stage, because I could feel just when I had enough flour. So after adding a bit more, you can now see that it's holding together as like big chunks of dough and stretching out rather than just crumbling so this lets me know that it's got enough structure to it because it has enough flour and now I just have to scrape off the monster hands and let this rest. Alrighty, we are powering through. So by quarter past eight, the oven was back up to temperature so it was time to get out the second sourdough. I decided to do a slightly different design for this one. So I just did a basic cross cut and then added in, I don't know if they're like ferns or leaves or feathers, but anyway, I thought that they were cute. And then in the other sections, I just did a few more long cuts and then this was ready to go into the oven. This loaf is always kneaded on a floured surface, unlike the sourdough, which you use water most of the time and then just flour at the end. Again here, I realized that I needed to add a bit more flour. It was just too sticky to work with. So here you're kind of trying to balance where it's good if it's high hydration, because that helps the dough to just be nicer when you eat it, but you need to actually be able to knead it and not have it just completely stuck to your hands. So it is a bit of a balancing game here. After just a minute or so, this was feeling really nice and squishy, holding together awesomely. So I put this aside for another 10 minutes or so before I did the next knead. Okay, this is the really fun part that I was so surprised about when I first made this dough, which yes, was like a week ago. But you oil the tin and then you get the dough out and you kind of flatten it. It says to use a rolling pin, but I think that that kind of bruises and damages the structure too much. So I like to just stretch it out by hand. So you want it to be just a little bit like narrower than the loaf tin and just kind of as long as makes sense for your bench. And then you take it and you roll it up like this little rolled up log. <laughs> Got to pat the dough. I didn't even realize how much I smacked the dough until I saw this. <laughs> So once it's in the tin, I just wet the surface so that the little toppings will be able to stick. I'm using kibbled rye and then a mixture of pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds just 
sprinkling those on and then gently pushing them into the dough. And this will then sit for about an hour before it goes into the oven. Doesn't it look cute? The second loaf is now ready to come out and again lifts out nice and easy and then straight onto the cooling rack. This loaf was ready after 45 minutes and came out of the tin so easily. And this is all of the fruits of our labor for the last few days. We started with the sourdough English muffins, which are in this awesome retro jar that I got. We have the two sourdough loaves and finally the soy, barley, oat, linseed, awesome tasty loaf last. I'm so happy with how these turned out. Alrighty, thank you so much for joining me today guys. I hope that you enjoyed my video and enjoyed seeing the different ways that I make bread in a simple, easy, non-time consuming way. I was really happy with how all of these turned out. They are so delicious and I'm just really glad that I could share it with you guys. So comment your thoughts down below, subscribe if you enjoyed this and want to see more and have an awesome week. See you guys later, bye.